Hello everybody, I'm Nistorm here. Welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, Millennium Dawn, Fiji. In the last episode, we got our new series started where we're playing as the South Pacific Island Nation of Fiji in an attempt to turn it into a global super superpower. And uh, so far, we navigated the 2000 coup. Um, and so we've come out on the other side of that. And we are working through these focuses here, which would hopefully provide improvements. Well, we're going to kind of go in the hole a little bit and then we'll climb out. And then we'll see if we can come out of all of this in a much better situation than we are currently in, which kind of has to be. So we'll work on that. We'll see what happens in the world. And... Um, for the most part, there really isn't much else we can do. We have a civilian factory under construction, which is going to finish in 2021. And uh, we have negative political power. We have negative weekly balance. We have no resources. We barely have an army. We have no air force. We have no navy. Yeah, we have a hill to climb. So, get to it. Now, one of the things I was looking around at is what potential options we have in our local neighborhood for absorption. Though, I think that we're probably going to have to up it and then integrate for a lot of the early beginnings of the game. We aren't just going to have, we just aren't going to have the manpower or equipment to uh, really do much of anything. We have this tiny little island down here, Tonga. Oh, hold on. Take a look at the Intel Ledger. We barely know anything about them, but it says they have no divisions. We have Samoa over here that supposedly have no divisions. We have Tuvalu over here that supposedly has no divisions. Uh, we have Vanuatu that supposedly has no divisions. So those are some potential opportunities. The things we cannot mess with right now. France. New Caledonia over here. Controlled by France. Uh, American Samoa right there. We don't want to touch that. Uh, we have French Polynesia over there. We don't want to touch that. I think the big get in kind of the short to medium term, should we be able to actually start to do anything, is going to be New Zealand. If we could somehow gain control of New Zealand, that would be huge. But, um, we have a long way to go before even that is on the table. All right, military mutiny is done. Solidified legitimacy. On November 15th, the High Court of Fiji declared that the interim government was illegal. Mara maintained, uh, Mara remained the lawful president. Parliament had not been dissolved, on, but only suspended, and should now be reconvened. And by implication, Tawdry remained the lawful prime minister. Mara subsequently officially resigned, with his resignation backdated to May 29th. All right, start it. Oh, what does that get me? 40 political power, changes the Fijian economy modifier to get 5% more political power, ideology drift defense increases, and the interest rate drops by 10%. Oop, Iranian civil war. Iran has declared war on revolutionary Iran. 
This morning, a handful of army officers and generals in the Iranian armed forces turned against the Iranian regime and sided with protesters vowing to bring about the end of the Islamic Republic. To follow suit, many other units and divisions have begun disobeying their orders and have started taking up arms alongside the Iranian people in their attempt to overthrow the Islamic Republic. This has caused Ali Khamenei to declare complete martial law and lockdown of the entire nation. Not long after, the IRGC stated that Iran's enemies are behind the conflict and the movement will be short-lived, with harsh punishments awaiting the dissidents and rioters. All right, so we have an Iranian civil war, we have revolutionary Iran and the Islamic Republic. And we'll see how that goes. And also we have the uh, the war, civil war in Afghanistan. American election, George W. Bush forms a new government. We have the Sudanese conflict. And what on earth is going on here in Congo? Means corrupt police management? No. Well, that's... That's a mess. That's a, that's a big mess. Alright. Next one is political deadlocking. 40 days. Following the reinstatement of the 1997 Constitution and subsequently the 1999 elected government, the nation was oddly put on hold. The government, having been held hostage, terrorized into resigning, and so forth, was now all of a sudden back to supposedly normal. While the nation is at ease, the main government ministers and members are not. Some wonder if they can truly keep their power in such an aftermath. More political power. All right. Ideology drift defense, bureaucracy multiplier, police multiplier, reduces the cost of everything. Nice. All right. Still a negative there. Still negative there. Ayatollah Khomeini flees Iran. Out of fear of being captured by rebel forces, the Ayatollah Khomeini has fled Iran following the Iranian civil war and is now seeking refuge in Venezuela, where he has been offered a sanctuary. He is being blamed by several government bodies within Iran for the uprising as they argue that he simply did not do enough to prevent it from happening in the first place. Iranian resistance leaders have called his escape cowardly and are demanding that he be returned to Iran for a fair trial. The Guardian Council has elected a government official they deem competent to deal with the uprising properly, but how he will do so is anyone's guess. We've got this guy. Hassem Soleimani? Something like that. I'm being offered a trade agreement by Bolivia. Okay. Oh, here we go. Another civil war has started. The Islamic Republic of Arabia has declared war on Al-Qaeda. So we have Al-Qaeda with Osama bin Laden fighting the Islamic Republic of Arabia. Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Don't know how close I got to pronouncing that correctly. All right, political deadlocking is complete. Karasay's challenge? Another name I'm going to butcher. All right, the Karasay government appealed the High Court's ruling on March 1st, 2001. The Court of Appeal of Fiji confirmed 
the High Court's decision reinstating the Constitution. The government would accept the ruling and would look to restart campaigning for the coming 2001 election. Now, we don't actually have an election here. The election is in the focuses, the 2001 Fijian general election. I think we have another one over here. I was looking around. The 2006 general election. And something is going to happen that is going to give us a choice of paths here. Damascus Spring. A wave of protests has erupted across Syria after the death of the previous president, Hafez al-Assad. People have been demanding a more open and democratic government. The current president, Mah Maher al-Assad, stated that these demonstrators are nothing more than revolutionaries and agents of foreign powers and will be treated as such. Which we'll have to go over what all these options are when we kind of get close to that. All right, Karase's challenge. Karase, Karase. An interesting proposal. One of the news agencies asked us for funding in exchange for more favorable news. We get a improvement of the popularity of the Fijian Association Party. We're minus .3, 360 million. I don't have the budget for that. Okay, so we need to wait until July 1st. To run the general elections. So we'll start to work on post-coup cleanup. In the aftermath, there's been significant amounts of property damage and a right mess of the general capital area of Suva. We must invest in speedily cleaning things up if we were to start on a blank slate and work towards our goals. All right, work. Now, right now, I don't really want to spend any political power because we are burning it fast. We're at 27%. Limited interventionalism. Yep. Not going to be able to do any of that. What would it take to justify a war goal? Need world tension. Democracies can't justify war goals against countries that have not generated world tension. I think we are officially Western Outlook. We are, I don't know. We are officially Western now. So we are going to have to get off of Western, which means we are going to have to not have the FAP in power. As amusing as it is. I'm leaning towards non-aligned, actually. I'll we'll have to see what it would take to get there. Uh, let's see. Interesting proposal. No. More startup money requested. 
0.07 billion. Four. I mean, that's another point. That's another 70 million. Okay. The growing unrest is affecting military production, and the government faces a crucial decision. Should they enforce measures to maintain output, or to de-escalate the protests, possibly exacerbating the production crisis? Well, right now we're not producing anything militarily, so a reduction in, in military production is essentially meaningless to us at this point. Factory output, military factory output, I think. Dockyard output down. Start negotiations. Replace basic civil service administration with large civil service administration. Replace basic police and security funding with extensive police and security. Gains, protest strikes. This is going to cost 250 political power and increase my costs across the board. Uh... No. Well, it's a 50-50 shot to decrease the protest strengths. I'm not sure how I would even check that. We'll say they'll return to work soon enough. We can take the um, the hundred day decrease in output because we're not outputting anything anyway. All right, post coup cleanup. We finish that. Uh, we'll go with rebuild Suva initiative. Local power gain, construction speed, monthly population. Movement for the liberation of Congo took four states. Rally for Congolese democracy took five states. The Democratic Republic of Congo was annexed. Okay, that mess of a situation has resolved itself. You guys are Western outlook, though you have no Western support. You guys are Western outlook, though you have no actual Western support. Is anything happening? Not at the moment. The whole bunch of wars. South Sudanese War, the Guinean Liberian War, the Angolan Civil War, Jubilander, the Somali, the Iranian Civil War. The Islamic Republic is kind of on the It's not much, but they've kind of taken the worst of it so far. Rebuild Suva Initiative. Okay, what do we get from this? Construction speed, factory output, dockyard output, power gain. The population. Really what I need is political power. Political power, construction speed. Tax revenue, yes. This is monthly population.
Okay, yeah, I think this is the side we want to work on first. Early community programs. Let's start with that one. We must rebuild the people's will to work together. We are all citizens of Fiji, and as such, we must be willing to live with one another. To show the coup isn't the reality of things, we shall create unity programs. These will show that towns and communities are about coming together and not tearing each other apart. Oh, wait. It's after July, isn't it? All right, we'll finish that one, and then we'll do the 2001 Fiji in general. Because this is only going to take a month. Uh, one thing I need to look at here is power by fuel plus 50,000 fuel. Fuel capacity. We no longer get the effects from protest strikes. All right. Point one billion, so one hundred million dollars to bring in fifty thousand fuel. Okay, do it. All right, early community programs is done. Let's do the two thousand one Fijian general election. Increases political power. Local power gain, population change, interest rates. Yep, do it. Georgia has declared war on Georgia. So it looks like we have a Georgian civil war. And there's the 9-11 attacks. American anthrax attacks, the war on terror. That's all started. Nope, we're not taking the corruption. Like, I ultimately would like to get rid of the corruption, if at all possible. We need political power for that, though. And... That... Getting there. Head Start Cooperative Programs. Let's work on that. Trade agreement with Yemen. That kind of disappeared. Minus 0 0.1 political power per day. We're getting there. We're getting there. Looks like the revolutionary Iran has uh, started an offensive. And also the Islamic Republic are not doing so well. Campaign donation to political rival. Uh, startup company for acquisition. This little startup company has been put on sale, uh, up for sale recently. It's currently gathering large interest from a large foreign company seeking to expand our operations in Fiji. Some are saying that this expansion should be stopped, but preventing the acquisition would go against free market principles. Australian influence by Fiji goes up by 5.07%. What is my current influence situation? Not great, if we would say. 23% UK. But 
But again, we need political power to combat that foreign influence, which we just don't have. So... Uh, the state will buy it first. We lose 30 million. Opinion of small and medium business owners goes up. We lose some popularity, but yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. And it's only 30 million. All right, George W. Bush announces enduring freedom. War in Afghanistan. Guantanamo Bay detention centers. Looks like the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan is collapsing. All right, we have completed our research on microprocessors. Excellence. And industrial electrospun polymeric nanofibers. So that got me some research speed, some factory output. Let's work on microcomputing. Increased research speed, and let's see. Uh, we got all this extra stuff in here for power. All right. Integrated transportation system. Construction speed plus 2%. Yes. Construction speed plus 2% in 800 days. Oh, gotta start somewhere. All right, Head Start Cooperative Programs is done. Let's see, Softer Situational Training Program. Research speed, construction speed, political power gain, political power gain. Yes. The tensions high among the ethnic groups. We must introduce police reform to prevent a soft on crime backlash. This reform is actually a new training program for law enforcement. The program is designed around civil disputes um, between groups and how officers can handle the situation without seeming to favor one side or another. All right. Run that. The Afghan Northern Alliance. Took five states. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan was annexed. Now we have the Bonn Agreement, an attempt to rebuild a proper post-war order in Afghanistan without the Taliban. Several national delegations from Western countries have met with 25 Afghan leaders in the city of Bonn, Germany. Hamid Karzai was recognized by the international community as rightful president of Afghanistan. Most of the nations of the world have now begun once again establishing diplomatic relations with Afghanistan. We'll see if that lasts. Hmm. The Islamic Republic of Arabia is not looking so great. Civil war in Afghanistan quiets down. The Afghani government has declared victory over the Taliban. The majority of strong, the strongest outposts and cities have been cleared of their presence. And most of what fighters remain have escaped across the border into Pakistan. Though the Taliban are reduced to only a few pockets and cells, the insurgency is projected to last for many years to come, albeit at lower levels. This victory has shown the effectiveness of the rebuilt Afghani army and resolved the Afghani government. I don't know, they're pushing back. Oh, we can pick a doctrine. Network center. Oh, this is all new.
I don't think we're going to go Guerrilla Warfare, and I don't think we're going to do Network Centric. So I think we're going to go down the decentralized route. By decentralizing command structures and expanding an informational warfare in all aspects of society, uh, one can deny the enemy situational awareness and gain local operational advantages. Yeah, we'll try that. All right, the softer situational training programs are complete. Service guarantees citizenship. All right, we must create a sense of national pride. For that, we can use the military. Maybe help bring in new peoples to make our island more diverse instead of just Fijians and Indo-Fijians. For that, we'll be creating a service to citizen program within the military. A little extra funding and something to better personally occupy the military leadership should help us overall in a post-coup world. Remember, they're doing their part. Are you? Join the Republic of Fiji military forces today. All right. Why not? All right. The Islamic Republic was annexed. The Iranian Civil War ends. Iranian revolutionaries triumphantly march across the capital, Tehran, as they declare victory over the Islamic Republic. This comes as Iran descended into chaos some months ago following a brutal brutal government response to a small demonstration in the north of the country. Large swaths of the army stood in solidarity with the revolutionaries and they subsequently turned against the Islamic Republic, sealing their fate once and for all. Uh, Sayyid Ali Khamenei, the former supreme leader of Iran, now silently resides in Venezuela where he has been granted a sanctuary by the Venezuelan government. He has not commented on anything so far, but Iranians are demanding that he be returned and tried for his crimes uh, during his term as the Supreme Leader. And some, for some time now, Iranians across the nation, oh, in some time, Iranians across the nation will have to decide what government they want ruling Iran moving forward. Western nations have expressed their support of the former Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi, whilst Chinese and Russians appear to be backing the MEK, a leftist organization. I mean, they're, they're holding on here. The Iranian Republic. Abdib Burumand, the new president of Iran, has pledged to hold free and fair elections following his victory in the grand referendum. Abdib Burumand has always campaigned for a secular democracy in Iran, especially during the reign of the Islamic Republic. Many people across the nation are absolutely ecstatic to hear this, as the last time Iran had democracy was back in the 50s, before the CIA cooed the system out of power. However, many are still expressing concern over the announcement as they fear that Iran is not ready for a democracy, considering the tense political climate following the Civil War. Green, white, and red banner of Iran flies high. It's not aligned at the moment. Assassination of Rafiq Hariri. Today, when the Prime Minister of Lebanon was leaving Parliament in his motorcade, a car bomb exploded while passing the St. George Hotel. Hariri, along with 21 other people, died in the explosion, leaving 220 others wounded. Responsibility for the attack has been claimed by the Nasra and Jihad group in Greater Syria, a previously unknown organization. Many believe that the Syrian government is behind this assassination, as Hariri was an outspoken critic of their occupation. The leader of the Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, is claiming that the attack was orchestrated by Israel to force Syria to leave Lebanon. And Al-Qaeda has declared war on Oman.
and Bahrain. Iran has declared war on the Artesh Authority of Iran. So we have a second Iranian civil war. This is a nationalist movement. Joint Chiefs of Staff versus the People's Republic of Iran, which is a emerging movement. Well, see what comes of that. But I think we are at the end of this particular episode. Uh, what are we doing here? We're, we're, we're almost positive political power with, while running a uh, focus. We're still pretty negative on the budget. I mean, that's uh, not a ton negative, but a debt to GDP ratio of 27.9%. An interest rate of what? 6.39? We'll just see how it goes. Alright. Well, for now, we will stop here. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.